Welcome. Family. Movies brief here. Today, I'm going to explain a German satirical comedy film called Look Who's Back. Spoilers ahead. The beginning of the movie is set somewhere during the Second World War in Berlin. The Führer, Hitler, is with a behavior coach named Keppel. Hitler expresses his disagreement with the gesture of people's greeting to Keppel. He complains that though the Nazi salute is outfashioned, people need to at least raise their hands up to the wrist and show respect. Then, he narrates that he has done everything humanly possible to destroy the foundations of the enemy who desecrated their soil. He finds German's existence incomprehensible and finds it alarming that he is here, too. In the following scene, he wakes up on the ground, somewhere in a forest. Looking up to the sky, he sees that the enemy aircrafts are missing and guesses that they might have taken some rest. Suddenly, a ball comes bouncing towards him and stops just at his side. He raises himself and heads towards a building, past the bush. He is then approached by three young kids, who question him if he is okay. Hitler looks at them and thinks that they are the future of the nation. He then asks them the way to the street. In that instant, a reporter, Fabian Sawatsky, is filming the kids with his camera. Hitler is seen on the far side of the screen. He picks up his army cap and says to himself that he should go to the Fuhrer bunker. Hitler gets to the street and is amazed by people riding monowheel bikes. He finds people capturing him on their cameras and expresses that though the rubble went, people have gone mad. Then, he feels a modern car by his hand and questions himself if he fell into a coma and missed the victory. He realizes that he is not aware of his situation entirely and alerts himself to collect more information. Then, he asks a man about the location of Chancellery, but the person instead asks him for a picture. He gets disturbed by the camera's flashes as people come near him and take photos in turns. Confused by the unusual events around him, he concludes that something went out of hand in this place. As Hitler walks away, he finds a woman speaking in German on her phone. He comes closer and asks her about the current date, but the woman is terrified and sprays his eyes. Hitler cries in pain as his eyes get reddish and his vision gets blurred. He stumbles and walks to a newspaper shop nearby. He gets shocked to see the date October 3rd, 2014 written on the paper and falls to the ground at once. Somewhere else, the boss of a TV station, Karner, praises Mr. Christoph Sensenbrink for his excellent job as the deputy's head. He proposes a higher solution, but instead announces another worker named Miss Katya Bellini as the managing director. Due to this, Christoph is shocked and dissatisfied. He comes to his office and vents his anger out at a struggling filmmaker named Fabian. Despite Fabian's best attempts to convince his boss, he gets fired and thrown out by the guards. Sometime later, Hitler wakes up at the news shop and asks the owner about the date. He confirms that it is in fact 2014. A confused Hitler questions if the shopkeeper has kidnapped him and suspects that this is all a trick play of the enemy's secret service. He threatens to kill the shopkeeper if he is working for the enemy, but the shopkeeper gives him a bar of chocolate instead. Hitler opens it after quite a struggle and sniffs it. He declares it to be industrially pressed grain and questions the shopkeeper if there is still a shortage of bread. The shopkeeper asks Hitler if they are filming a documentary somewhere nearby, mistaking him for an actor. The shopkeeper then says that he looks exactly like the Fuhrer, to which Hitler replies that he is the Fuhrer. After that, Hitler sees the Turkish newspaper and asks if the shopkeeper has Stürmer or Panzerbar. The shopkeeper says that he has more Turkish customers. Hitler is astonished at the presence of Turkish people in Berlin. He then starts collecting information from the newspaper. While reading it, he assumes that he didn't win the war in the past, and Germany was given to the hands of clumsy women having the charisma of a wet noodle. He further laments the existence of Poland, and concludes the war to be a total waste. Meanwhile, Fabian looks upon his video reporting about soccer, and sobs, sad at the fact that he was fired. Don't worry, Fabian. In a couple years, you can get a job on YouTube. His mother calms him and asks him to pause the video, noticing Hitler behind. Fabian is amused at the discovery of a person who looks so similar to Hitler. Back in the shop, the shopkeeper asks Hitler to keep the newspaper aside and stand outside. Hitler grudges at being asked to work. The shopkeeper suggests Hitler clean his clothes, for they stink. He then goes to a laundry place and asks them to clean his uniform. Hitler asks if they have another uniform, since he cannot walk away naked. 
Hitler doesn't understand that he's in modern-day Germany now, and nudity is no big deal. Next, we see Hitler walking to the news cellar with jeans and a sweater on. Hitler's looking bussin'. Fabian, on the other hand, has somehow managed to find him and is waiting for him in the shop. After getting a look at Hitler, he is amazed at his appearance. Fabian asks Hitler if he can film him as he marches through modern Germany. Hitler agrees with the idea. Fabian takes up some cash and a car from his mother and begins his journey with Hitler. The two end up in a hotel where Hitler gets amused at seeing the television. He then decides to talk about politics in Fabian's presentation. He goes to places, asking people regarding their views on politics. After the interviews, he finds that there was minimal impact of democracy upon people during his absence. He inspects discontent and suppressed anger in people, which reminds him of the 1930s, when people had similar views but lacked the term political disenchantment. People tell Hitler about the problem of immigrants in the country, making Hitler push his idea that mixing the races doesn't work. Later, Fabian asks Hitler the source of his unique mustache. Hitler replies that he cut his mustache to a shape that fits a gas mask. A while later, the two end up on a farm where Hitler gets bit by a dog. He is enraged and shoots at the animal. Fabian scolds him and seizes the gun. As the tour goes on, Fabian eventually runs out of cash, but he thinks of a plan and convinces the passers-by to have their sketches drawn by Hitler. Hitler finally gets to exhibit his creative side and draws sarcastic pictures which people find funny and pay for. They continue their trip after collecting enough money. Back in town, Fabian shows a clip of Hitler to Kristoff. The video has a lot of views as Fabian has uploaded it to the internet. Kristoff is impressed by the large number of views on the video. He asks Fabian for Hitler's name and contact number. After meeting him, Kristoff suspects Hitler to be a lunatic and asks Fabian to take him away from his office. Before leaving, Hitler enters the director's office and asks her to save Germany together with him. Interested by the idea, Bellini asks him about the plan. She quickly asks her assistant to prepare a proper TV format for broadcasting the Fuhrer on listening to Hitler's idea. Fabian then threatens Kristoff to give him his job back or else he will take Hitler away. On hearing this, Kristoff makes him a kitchen boy, promising to promote him when a new editorial post opens up. Kitchen boy is better than an internship, I guess. Sometime later, Hitler is given a table at the TV studio. Kristoff calls Kromeyer to help Hitler with computer use. Hitler recalls the computers of his days and labels the invention to be one of the greatest. Kromeyer tries to sign up Hitler to email, but informs him that his name is already taken. Hitler grunts for others stealing his name and tells her to use New Reich's chancellery as he liked it. Kristoff plans to put Hitler on a live comedy show called Whoa, Dude. He is still salty because Bellini got a promotion instead of him and intends to create trouble for her. He intends to bring racism to the debate through sarcastic jokes on Jews and throw out Hitler. The show starts and Witzigman, the host, calls for Hitler on the stage. The audience gossips about Hitler's appearance, but when Hitler gazes at the audience, the hall goes completely silent. Hitler soon breaks the silence, but does not read out the lines as scripted. He explains that he is to tell a joke about immigrants, but he is not going to do so. He says that a TV is a great invention of the human, but the shows broadcasted are nonsense. Clearly, Hitler hadn't seen Game of Thrones yet. He sheds lights on problems like poverty and unemployment and forecasts that the people of the country are heading towards the abyss without noticing it. Hitler vows to fight against the TV, not only up to the broadcast of the abyss, but also until he succeeds in overcoming them. Everyone likes the idea and claps for him. Seeing Hitler's popularity, the host, Witzigman, gets envious. Bellini asks Kristoff to broadcast Hitler in every show. Kristoff is distressed because of the failure of his plan. In the following scene, we see Hitler give interviews on numerous TV shows and share that his motive is to make Germany great again. <laughs> wow, this movie was ahead of its time. His popularity grows immensely, and he meets several people and party leaders. He starts charming them all by sharing his ideas. One day, Hitler and Fabian visit NPD headquarters in Berlin. He calls for Ulf Biern, the federal chairman of NPD, and asks him what his cause has achieved so far. Hitler belittles him and says that they have wasted enough time and the movement is taken aback by decades due to their words. Kristoff gets excited and happy when the cops and district attorney, DA, appear at the TV studio. 
They explain that they are here for a complaint of charging violation of hate laws. Bellini asks what they are to do then. Quickly, Kristoff pops that they might need to cancel the Fuhrer show. The DA says that they can keep the broadcasting on. Bellini takes a sigh of relief, while Kristoff fakes his smile. After the DA leaves, Kromeyer hands over a letter to Kristoff, stating the payment of the dog, which Hitler had shot earlier in his trip. Kristoff receives the letter happily, believing it might be a way to cause trouble. Next, Hitler is put on a TV program where he is asked direct questions about his different roles in the war. Hitler responds that he wants to reach out to people, but the interviewer tells him that all his deeds cannot be justified. He shows him the clip of him shooting the dog. The video disturbs the audience. Hitler is angered and threatens him that he would do the same to him. He further says that he will turn their studio into a parking lot for tanks. Kristoff gets happier, seeing people's negative responses. After the disastrous interview, Bellini is fired and Kristoff is appointed as the new manager. After that, Hitler goes to Fabian's house and starts living with him. He expresses amusement at the path taken by destiny and starts to write his second book. The book soon hits the market. Three months later, at the TV studio, everyone sits in a meeting where the massive loss that the company has gone through is discussed. Kristoff believes that Witzigman's show will put them back on track, but one employee informs him that he has quit his job. Kristoff gets tense and mad at the selected employees for losing the show. One of the staff suggests getting Hitler back, which interests Kristoff. He looks for Hitler again and offers Fabian that he will invest a million in the film that Fabian and Hitler are shooting. If, in return, they let them broadcast the movie on their TV station, Hitler and Fabian come to Kromeyer's house, where Kromeyer's grandmother identifies Hitler. She claims that Hitler gassed all the people up and killed them. She calls him a criminal and shouts at him to get out. In the car, Hitler shares that he is surprised at Kromeyer being a Jew. He starts to belittle Jews, calling them less of humans. Fabian gets disappointed at Hitler's actions and his words. Back in the set, Fabian gets Hitler to replay how he got to the place. He asks Hitler what happened before the ball came rolling to him in the woods, but Hitler cannot remember it. Later at night, he walks off the set and is surrounded by some thugs. They call him the reason to take Germany back and give him a hard blow on his face. As Hitler opens his eyes, he finds himself in a hospital in front of Bellini. At the same time, Fabian looks over the footage of the video he captured about the boys and soccer. He watches it closely and finds Hitler rose from where he was lying. Fabian gets amazed at what happened before it. He quickly goes to the place and finds a board at the location, stating the historical location of Führer Bunker. Fabian rushes to the hospital but does not find Hitler. Bellini says that he is headed to the shooting set. Fabian reveals that he is the real Adolf Hitler, but Bellini does not believe him. Fabian acts mad and tries to explain his theory hysterically. The guards try to catch him, but he flees. Fabian then reaches the set and aims a gun at Hitler. When asked about his identity, Hitler explains that he never claimed to be anyone else. Fabian says that Hitler is fooling people with his propaganda, to which Hitler replies that people elected a leader who shared his whole idea openly in 1933. Fabian takes Hitler to the top of a building with his gun. He corners Hitler and declares him to be a monster. Hitler in turn claps back, saying that ordinary people elected an extraordinary man and entrusted the fate of the country to him. He explains that people chose him because they bear the same values in their inner hearts. An enraged Fabian shoots Hitler, making him fall off the building onto the street. Soon, Fabian hears Hitler's voice, who says that no German can get rid of him. And Hitler, who was just thrown down, appears right behind it again. Just then, Bellina calls for a cut in the studio, and everyone cheers for the shoot. Turns out that it was just a film shoot, and a random actor was playing the role of Fabian. Hitler then asks everyone to remember the comrades who could not be with them. Somewhere else, Kromeyer is sobbing, seeing Fabian through a hole in the mental ward. Hitler and Bellina are busy giving autographs and interviews to people after the film booms. As they pass by a car, the people on the street seem fond of Hitler and greet him with respect. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.